Like we saw for the aldol reaction, the synthetic utility of the Claisen condensation is really expanded if we can use two different esters in the reaction or two different carbonyl compounds more generally, and we can do that in a crossed Claisen condensation. But as in the aldol reaction, as with that reaction here, we have some limitations on the structures of the substrates we can use for this. In general, if we just take two esters, different esters, and mix them up with alkoxide base, we're going to get a mess of condensation products with the two esters acting as nucleophiles and electrophiles, dimerization, and what we might call cross-coupling. All four of those possibilities are, are going to uh, make themselves known. So there are two major strategies for surmounting this issue with crossed Claisen condensations. Um, there's also intramolecular Claisen condensation, which we'll look at on the next slide. The first strategy involves using a non-enolyzable ester that cannot form an enolate. This means that that ester will necessarily act as the electrophile. So, for example, a benzoate is shown here with a benzene group connected to the carboxyl group. And notice that with this alkoxy group on the other side, we have no alpha hydrogens over there. So we really just need to pay attention to the only alpha carbon in the ester. In esters, there is only one alpha carbon. So in this example, this ester with the alpha carbon bearing two alpha hydrogens will be the nucleophile. Necessarily, the methyl benzoate will be the electrophile. And the product will involve acylation of this alkyl, uh, alkanoate ester, we might say. Other non-enolyzable esters you might see in this role include formate and pivolate. Formate has just an H attached to the carbonyl carbon, so no alpha carbons at all. And pivolate contains a tert butyl group at that alpha position, so no alpha hydrogens there, no possibility of forming an enolate. Directed Claisen condensation is also possible, and the idea here is that we preform an ester or ketone enolate. This will also work with ketones. And then we add the electrophile slowly to avoid equilibration of the enolates and ensure that the electrophile that we add in slowly to the solution of the enolate acts as the electrophile. Notice also in both of these reactions that we need that acidic workup at the end because the mechanism here is exactly the same as the dimerization Claisen mechanism that we've seen already. The reaction sits at the stabilized enolate product and we need to add acid to protonate that to isolate the neutral product. So, for example, in a directed Claisen condensation, we would use a very strong base like LDA to generate the enolate quantitatively. And then we add in the ester that we want to act as the electrophile to a solution of the enolate. So LDA forms the enolate completely, 100%, and then that reacts with the electrophile to uh, be acylated. Notice that this is the electrophilic portion on the right, and what we've done essentially is acylated the methyl acetate here by preforming the enolate of methyl acetate and then adding in the electrophile. So the new bond is formed here and we end up with a beta keto ester. It's also possible to synthesize beta keto ketones via this method. So for example, we can take cyclohexanone, hit that with LDA, that will deprotonate at that alpha position and form this enolate and 100% yield essentially. And then we treat with the electrophile. Here the electrophile is ethyl acetate and this is a very common solvent. So you may see it written like this, keep in mind, this is an ester, right? The acetyl group is connected to an oxygen, which is connected to an ethyl group. So this is ethyl acetate, and that's an ester. And that's going to act as our electrophile here via the carbonyl carbon in this thing. And so we're going to acetylate, we might say, the enolate of cyclohexanone, ending up with this beta keto ketone. So you can use this directed Claisen method to preform a ketone enolate and then end up with a 1,3 diketone this way. The intramolecular Claisen condensation, for historical reasons, is known as the Dieckmann condensation, but it's nothing more and nothing less than an intramolecular Claisen condensation, and the mechanism is identical to the intermolecular Claisen condensation that we've already seen. Like other intramolecular condensations we've seen, like the intramolecular aldol, this reaction shows a preference for five- and six-membered rings, which are stable ring sizes in organic chemistry. So given a choice between different possibilities, we're going to want to go for the five- or six-membered ring product, and generally this reaction works best when the product contains a five- or six-membered ring. Because the mechanism works just like the intermolecular Claisen, we still require two alpha hydrogens on the nucleophilic side, because deprotonation of the resulting uh, beta keto ester is what drives this reaction thermodynamically. So we need to be able to form a stabilized enolate after the acylation mechanism is done. And 
This first example shows reaction of a seven carbon ester, diester we might say, with two ester groups at carbon one and carbon seven. We want to make sure, as in the intermolecular claisen, that this alkoxide matches the alkoxy groups of the two esters. And I've gone ahead and numbered the carbons so that we can see that this reaction involves the linkage of carbon two, the nucleophile, with carbon seven, the electrophile. Ethanol is a byproduct since one of the ethoxide groups leaves and is ultimately protonated on acidic workup. And we can see here, again, that carbon two is gonna act as the nucleophile, carbon seven as the electrophile, and this is our product. And in fact, we could also equivalently think of carbon six acting as the nucleophile here via an enolate on this ester, and carbon one acting as the nucleophile, and we'd end up with the same product since the two esters in this substrate are equivalent by symmetry. When the two esters are not equivalent, we've got to think a little bit harder, and that's the case in this mechanism where we have an alpha carbon that has three substituents, the ester, a methyl, and this carbon chain on the left, and on the right we have an alpha carbon with only two substituents, the ester here and this carbon with two H's. What's going to occur here is based on this requirement that two alpha hydrogens are required on the nucleophilic side. So only this side can productively give acylation product because only this side can form a stabilized enolate after being acylated. When we acylate over here, no alpha hydrogens would remain, no possibility of forming a stabilized enolate. So this side will necessarily act as the electrophile this side will act as the nucleophile because of its two alpha hydrogens there, and the product we get will look like this. Notice here that there is a hydrogen at this carbon highlighted in red. Formation of the stabilized enolate in this first step is critical, and acidic workup is used to protonate there to ultimately get the neutral products. So keep in mind the Dieckmann condensation as a method for the synthesis of five and six-membered cyclic beta-ketoesters.